sleepwhisper.com My name is Jason Newland This is Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis Thank you for joining me Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes And a bit of an announcement My new podcast is now and live and ready to be downloaded so it's the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis app it's an Android app which you can download on your Android phone Android tablet or wherever and uh, it's available on the Google App Store and you can find the link on my website sleepwhisper.com I'm going to put a link in the description of this uh, podcast bit that podcast episode as well so it just makes it a little bit easier for you to just have it on your phone and it updates automatically whenever I post a new recording that out the way so I thought it'd be nice to just sit quietly together and kind of just notice what's going on around which 
was so busy. I mean, it got a little bit quiet between about two o'clock and five in the, mo in the morning. I had about three hours. And then the lorries would be coming. And, of course, in the summer, uh, the earlier the light comes out, the earlier the birds are tweeting and singing and I lived in the countryside as well so I had this main road but behind it was a park so it's a really quite strange situation and I had two options I could try and block it out or I could embrace it did try both and I was able to block it out if I chose that took work that took effort and again effort isn't part of sleeping sleeping takes no effort there's no hardship in There's no trying involved. It's just allowing yourself to do what's natural. So I started to just accept those sounds that were there. change the sounds I suppose I could have internally done some stuff but you know ultimately that was reality those sounds were there I could have wore earplugs but I chose to just allow the sound to be there because it was there just like the background sound here of the train at the very distance. Occasionally I've had a plane or a helicopter go past. Maybe a barking dog or the other side of the building, cars going past. Sometimes even a car alarm goes off in the distance. So I'm wondering what sounds can you hear right now? Apart from my voice. Can you hear? And this is kind of the same as when you do the body scan and you focus on your different parts of your body, but without judging, without commenting having a self-analysis going on but just observing and you can do that with sounds I mean obviously if there was a, a situation that needed your attention then you deal with that but that's an unlikely situation These, there's a motorbike in the distance on the motorway I can hear it and it's just a sound and I realise 
realized back then that the difference between using the word sound and the noise sound has no emotion connected to it noise has a lot of emotion connected to that word noise can be anger, irritability furiousness I don't know, different things it's kind of a negative word noise no one's ever no one's ever knocked on their child's door, bedroom door and said oh what a lovely noise your music is can you please turn can you please turn that lovely noise down that wonderful noise so when you make that switch in your mind that just turn that flick that switch basically from noise to sound it's just sound. It's a neutral thing. Noise can be an angry thing. A, a really like uptight, stressful thing. Sound. Sound is just sound. Neutral. Absolutely. It's like it's covered in Vaseline. You can't grip to it. You can't, you, you know, anger and various different uh, emotions, negative emotions, can't attach itself or themselves to the word sound. Because it's just a word, a neutral word that represents millions and billions of things because the sounds that we hear just in any given day will be numerous so many different sounds even if you never leave your apartment or your home for the day you're going to hear so many background sounds you can hear the fridge you can hear the toilet flush at some point, the water out of the taps. Maybe you'll hear a moth bashing against the light bulb, uh, a bee or a wasp trying to get in the window. Maybe, like me, you'll fold your, fold your legs and your, your knee might crack. You know, the bones, I had that with my toes as well. I just did it there. There's always sound. There's never no sounds. Even if you were in a, uh, what's that, those chambers where you can go into um, sense deprivation chambers where it's like it's supposed to, it's supposed to be nothing, no sound, no visual, nothing. All you gotta do is talk talk out loud and there's sound bang on the lid on the sides there's sound click your fingers splash the water there's sound in fact you can just open your mouth and you can feel your jaw moving and there's a sound connected to it sound so by changing how we observe things so easily changing from noise to sound by you know, clicking that switch change the way that you feel when you're lying in your bed and maybe you've got traffic outside 
as you wake up a few hours in and have to go to the toilet. More information than you needed, but I always fall back asleep so quickly. I mean, practically instantly. And there's something about that. So if you do get woken up by a sound outside, you can just lay over lay over the other side or change your position and sleep in or just stay as you are and you drift off into an even deeper healthy sleep
first time everything curiosity even if it's seen its own toes for the first time and at that same time the brain is growing so to say that a baby has nothing to think about it has there's a lot of thinking more thinking in a baby's brain than in an adult's brain more processes going on more growth more connections being connected more stimulation of the brain doesn't stop a baby from going to sleep if anything I imagine the baby goes to sleep to take a break from it which means they've got the right idea take a break from your brain and go to sleep sleep is the best thing you can do sometimes it's just the best solution for how you're feeling it's definitely the best solution for tiredness obviously so maybe we can all just from babies but remembering that we were that baby we were a baby at one point so we knew we knew and were born with that knowledge that inbuilt knowledge that having a nap falling asleep is a great way to have a break from your brain to take a rest from your brain so maybe that's what we should call sleep sleep is taking a break from your brain taking a break from your life taking a break from thinking taking a break from your work taking a break from worries taking a break from all that stuff a lot of which may be important when you're awake but doesn't have to be when you're asleep Right. 
sleep when you fall asleep it's not even something worth 